Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sahil Murli Meghani. In this episode of Checks and Balance, our focus is on India's real COVID death toll. Estimates by the World Health Organization published last week have sent shockwaves all across the globe, particularly in India. Because as per the WHO's estimates, 47 lakh Indians died due to COVID in the years 2020 and 2021. That's nearly 10 times the Indian government's official COVID death toll. The Indian government's response to this disclosure by the World Health Organization has been on expected lines. It has dismissed these estimates by questioning the very methodology used by the WHO to arrive at these estimates. In this episode, we are getting you a multi-layered fact check to show how the Indian government's response is devoid of science, reasoning, and most importantly, of facts. The first logical step for us was to speak with the World Health Organization, in particular with the head of the WHO's technical advisory group, Jonathan Wakefield, who with his team of scientists worked for over a year to arrive at these estimates. In this video interview from Seattle, he revealed to the wires checks and balance that the methodology that the Indian government has questioned is in fact not, not the one that he and his team used. He also told me that there was absolutely no scope for any confusion as the Indian government was repeatedly told about the method not once or twice, but multiple times over a period of six months in several email exchanges. Listen in to my conversation with the head of WHO's technical advisory group, Jonathan Wakefield. The Indian government, Jonathan, has rubbished your report. They have dismissed your estimates. And the Indian government's main logic, main argument to do so, is the methodology that you have used to arrive at these estimates. The government of India thereby is questioning the very methodology that you have used to arrive at these estimates. My question to you is, is the government of India's rebuttal response to your estimates correct? Or is there a flaw even in the response that the Indian government has given to your very mind boggling estimates? Yes, well, um, so in the, for, we estimated excess mortality for every country in the world. And there were really two collections of countries we had um, we didn't have full data from. Some countries we had full uh, mortality data from, then and some countries we had absolutely no data. For those countries with no data, we took one approach, and then for some countries, a very small number of countries, India being one of them, we had subnational data. In India's case, we had data from seventeen states, and those are the data we used. And so, the majority of the criticisms that the Indian government put out multiple times of concern the first approach which we didn't use for india so just to jonathan just to make it simple for our viewers to understand there are two models that you use to arrive at your estimates one is model a for a certain group of countries and another is model b for another set of countries you have used model b for india but the government of india has rubbished your reports questioning this model A, which you, in fact, have not used. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yes. Oh, God. So that's a big blunder by the government of India then. Um, well, I wouldn't use the word blunder. I mean, the Indian government's been repeatedly told which model we've used since December of last year. And, you know, the multiple. I wasn't party to these um, emails that were sent out, but WHO, I know sent out multiple emails containing the methodology. There's been methodological documents in place for months now, over six months now, and those were sent to India. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why they've been saying these things about the methodology when they know that that's not the methodology that we used. Jonathan, you're making an important point. You're saying that it wasn't a one-off interaction with the Indian government or wasn't even re uh, restricted to two or three interactions, but multiple repeat uh, exchanges over emails over a period of six months uh, that, in, that the Indian government was told repeatedly about the exact methodology that we have used. So there is absolutely no scope of uh, confusion there. 
No, they shouldn't be. No, they really shouldn't be. Not just that. Jonathan Wakefield also told me that his team was ready with these estimates by December 2021. And the WHO could not publish them because there was stiff resistance from India. Now, this period coincided with high stake elections in India's five states, including Uttar Pradesh. Jonathan told me that the arguments from the Indian government's side were unscientific. This delay due to India's attempt to stall, in fact, left some scientists so frustrated that at one point they began contemplating releasing these estimates even without WHO's endorsement. Listen in. Listen in to that conversation, tell-all conversation with Jonathan Wakefield. Is it true that the data was ready much before and it was because of stiff resistance by many countries, but more particularly by India, that it got delayed uh, till May of 2022 for it to be actually released? Yeah, I mean, we were ready to go back in December. And um, yeah, it was primarily due to India that the, the Indian government's unhappiness with the estimates. That's why the delay occurred multiple times. One of your team members uh, who worked with you to come up with these estimates, and his name is Ariel Karlinsky, he has said, and I quote, that, the, that they were nonsensical arguments from the Indian side. So could you elaborate on what these uh, nonsensical arguments from the Indian side were? Yeah, I think Ariel's alluding to the, 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 the conversation we had earlier that, yeah, their complaints were primarily about the methodology. Well, uh, allegedly about methodology, but it wasn't the methodology that we used. And yeah, that's what Ariel's um, alluding to that, as we talked about earlier, you know, that the arguments are not, they don't, they're not scientific arguments. If they, you know, they, um, they, they I don't know, I think they're willfully misunderstanding the, the methodological documents we've sent to them. I believe in this work. I mean, I don't want the, what to be lost here. This is a tragedy what happened in India and also in many countries in the world. And I want to continue working on that. And I don't want to become involved in the politics. But to say that, I have been very frustrated in that, you know, I believe these estimates are useful. And to have them delayed for all these months for not for, not for good, for, for political reasons rather than scientific reasons, then that's very frustrating. So were there those moments when... In, uh, independent scientists were so frustrated that they were thinking of just going ahead and publishing this data even without WHO's endorsements because of these uh, stalled tactics by many countries, including India, more prominently? Yeah, I mean, I think people were, were I was certainly frustrated and I was on the technical advisory group were as well. And um, yeah, we, we were we were in, we were having conversations constantly with people from WHO on this. And um, I mean, at some point it was clear they had to, there, there was some, I mean, and you never know what, in things like this, what was real and what wasn't real, but there was talk of you know delaying the estimates by years, and so that just that was never that wasn't going to happen because you know we we work on these technical all the members of this technical advisory group you know we're not paid to do this we do this out of our own time and we've all put a lot of time and energy into this and we all believe in this and you know we all believe in global health and um, that you know we wanted the estimates out there because the whole point of this is so people understand you know for the people who die. And their relatives, you know, there's a moral obligation to get these numbers out there. So I just wanted to get these. Once we'd done all these checks and balances, I really wanted to get the numbers out. And um, I'm, I'm just glad in the end that they came out, that, you know, they came out endorsed by, you know, they, they came out as WHO releases. So it, it happened the way I wanted in the end. But, but there was certainly a time when you all were so frustrated that you wanted to just go ahead and publish it even without WHO's endorsement. There were some discussions amongst us, but thankfully that never happened. That's a matter of embarrassment on a global scale for the government of India. Now, India's Narendra Modi government has been calling the WHO's methodology questionable and has cited India's civil registration system or CRS while doing so. In the CRS, births and deaths are recorded under the Registration of Birth and Death Act 1969. Under this, the deaths are first recorded in physical registers at the local gram panchayats and municipal levels. This data is then gradually fed digitally into a central database. Because of the expansiveness of the activity, the nationwide numbers are usually published the following year. And this is where it can get sinister. The Indian government had not released this crucial data for 2020 
in 2021 and the data for 2021 in 2022. But the government decided to release the 2020 data collected by the CRS just two days before the WHO report was due to be published. The Indian government though still has still not published the 2021 data. According to the 2020 data published by the government, there were 8.3 lakh excess deaths in 2020 over the average number of deaths the previous two years. The WHO's Jonathan Wakefield told me that this is almost similar to the WHO's estimate for 2020 as well. He told me that this is in fact a clear indicator that if India releases 2021 death data, the year India experiences deadly second wave driven by the Delta variant, then the Indian government's own figures, own figures would be consistent with the WHO's estimate of 47 lakh excess deaths. So why the current hangama then? There's also been, again, as you probably know, there's been a number of studies that have looked at the, the toll of the pandemic for India using other data sources. You know, there's been a number of works now and we're all in the same ballpark figure, you know, that we're all, you know, we're all consistent, consistently giving around the same number. And that even includes the uh, two days before the, the WHO released the estimates, the Indian government released some CRS data. And, you know, some calculations have been done. This was for 2020 only, where, we, you know, the, the death toll in 2020 was much, much smaller, more like we estimated as around 830,000 excess deaths. And so people have looked at those data that India released and our figure of 830,000 is very consistent with the data released from India. So I was actually very happy that India released those data because it gave more credibility to our estimates, I believe, because it showed that our 2020 estimate was actually pretty accurate. You're right, because uh, India saw its deadly second wave in the year 2021. And the right. data released by uh, India CRS is only for 2020. But you're seeing, saying even when you're looking at da that data, uh, it's somehow consistent with, with your findings or uh, with your estimates. Uh, you're mm -hmm. saying that if India were to release its figures uh, for 2021, then that is going to be consistent with your own estimates if we have to go by the figures that they have released for 2020. Yeah, if they, is it, yes. I mean, I, and there's nothing... I'd like to be clear, there's nothing I would like more than to have the national data for India. That's what we've been wanting since since we've been asking for that since December. And it didn't arrive till two days before the report was due. Now that we have shown you how even the Indian government's response to the WHO's estimates was flawed. Let's look at the evidence available back home. Up on your screens now is this report by the Reporters Collective. Instead of relying on the government's figures, the Reporters Collective decided to go to the primary source of data, that is, the original death figures at the local level. In its investigation, it found that just in 68 of Gujarat's 170 municipalities, that is home to just 6% of Gujarat's population, over 10,000 more people died of all causes in April 2021 which was the month of the devastating second wave compared to April 2020. And that figure itself was more, was more than the official COVID death toll for the whole state of Gujarat. And it's not just Gujarat. I had myself done a real time survey of Delhi's 29 COVID dedicated crematoria and burial grounds at the peak of the second wave in April and May of 2021 for Channel 4 and NRK TV. In my investigation, I had found that in just a 15-day period, Delhi had cremated a staggering 3,552 more COVID patients just from hospitals than the Delhi government's official figures for the very same period. And this crucially didn't even include laboratory confirmed positive cases who died outside hospitals and which crematoria workers revealed to me. It also didn't include those who were unofficially cremated in parks. Now, the point to be noted here is that these statistics were for India's national capital, New Delhi, which has relatively, relatively been more transparent. Now, Delhi is home to roughly around 2 crore people, which is a very small fraction of India's population of 1.38 billion. This math 
conclusively shows the size of discrepancy between India's official COVID death toll and the probable actual toll. In fact, there are media reports that have documented the testimonies of relatives of many who died of COVID or were suspected to have died of COVID, but whose death certificates mentioned other official causes of death like heart attack. Now, since this entire episode was to fact check the government of India's methodological offensive against the WHO's estimates, let us tell you about the method that the Modi government follows when it responds to reports, rankings and estimates by top global bodies that contradict the government's claims. One by one, on the left hand side of your screen people, you will see reports that have been critical of the Modi government's response. And on the right hand side, you will see the Indian government's responses to them. The pattern is clear. Without fail, the government's instant response to such report is to question their methods. The World Inequality Report in 2022 called India a very unequal country. The Modi government's response, methodology questionable. The Global Hunger Index ranked India at number 101 out of 116 countries behind Pakistan, Bangladesh and Nepal. The Modi government's response, Methodology questionable. The World Press Freedom Index ranked India at number 150 and the Modi government's response? Methodology questionable. Looking at this, all the top global agencies probably have one question for the Modi government and that is Wow Modi ji, wow. Wow, wow. In Hindi, there is an idiom that aptly describes the Modi government's way to deal with the global reports on its performance. Meetha, meetha, gup, gup. Kadwa, kadwa, thu, thu. It means to gobble up that which is sweet, but to spit out that which is bitter. With this, we have come to the end of this episode. For the bereaved families, each life lost to COVID was more than a statistic, but it is a tragedy that the Indian government is not even considering them to be a statistic. Please, please people share this on your social media accounts, in your WhatsApp groups, on Facebook, on Twitter, essentially everywhere where you are and help us contain the massive disinformation campaign. This is Sahil Murli Mekhani signing off. Thank you so much for watching. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.